Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's uh, not raining today, which feels like progress, so that's cool. Uh, today, Sebastian writes in asking about uh, self-hosting and how much work do I think is required uh, before we can develop Serenity OS in Serenity OS. And uh, yeah, thank you, Sebastian, for asking about that. That's a, that's a good question, and it's something that a lot of people um, seem to be quite interested in. Um, so I think the short answer is not that much, honestly. Uh, there's already a GCC compiler port, um, you know, make all of the uh, usual utilities. Um, we have had some changes to the build system since last time I was um, trying to build Serenity in Serenity, but I don't imagine that they would be <coughs> terribly difficult to accommodate. Uh, it's probably just a matter of um, like taking it out and fixing it up again. Uh, but I don't know. Like for me, it's it's not about, and it's not so much about the um, like the practical feasibility of uh, proof of concept building the system inside the system. Uh, it's more about getting the system to a place where I feel that uh, that it is stable enough that I would that I want to spend more time in it. Uh, and over the last month or so, I've definitely felt that increasing. And I think a lot of the um, the sudden um, shift to this sort of security-minded work has um, given me a lot of inspiration when it comes to stability because most of the work that I've done to, to improve the security of the system has been stability work and correctness work and just like catching errors before they cascade into bigger errors, things like that. And um, it's, it's easy to think of these as security fixes, but really they are also stability fixes, right? And I think the system is in a much, much better place stability-wise right now than it was um, a month ago. And I'm very, very happy about that. And there are, like, there are a couple of pain points now that are starting to become visible. And I think I would consider these um, like the main pain points for me to switch over to developing inside Serenity. And um, the first one, I guess, is memory management. And the kernel memory management specifically, it, is, it has a bunch of artificial limitations, like uh, the ones that I talked about in my video on crappy data structures. <laughs> The kernel uses a bunch of crappy data structures to manage uh, physical memory, to manage virtual memory, and um, these become an issue when either when you use a lot of memory uh, or when you use a lot of programs because we have a very, very hard limit on the amount of page tables we can create at the moment, and it's just it's just unpleasant. Like everybody who's been working on the system for some time, they've probably seen the uh, um, no super pages available, and that's definitely something that we need to fix. And it's a non-trivial fix, but it's something I have to actually sit down and engage with. I think that's that's one major pain point <clears throat> for me. And then another pain point is file system locking. So currently the file system is very, very aggressive in just locking the whole file system whenever anything is being read from or written to it. Uh, and it happens on a um, um, sort of a mount basis almost that, um, you know, you can, you can be in like slash proc and, and doodle around. But um, if you have two processes, both writing to a file in the home directory, then um, they have to take turns holding the uh, the file system lock for that file system, and it's just not super great. Um, and actually, maybe maybe it's okay that you can only have one process writing at a time, but we 
I mean, at the moment at least, but we certainly would need to do something about um, like reading something else while you're writing something else. Uh, that's a case where both, both of those um, processes would take the whole file system lock and it's not possible to read from one file while writing to another. Um, and <clears throat> for me, that's a, that's a big pain point because it just locks up the system effectively when I want to do something until um, you know, things finish up. Uh, but you know that's something that we can we can probably address quite easily at least um, if we just move to a reader's writer lock for example in the file system code then uh, we could at least read as much as we want uh, as long as we're not writing um, and then you know the locking needs to become a lot more fine um, like the fact that like if you're just overwriting the bytes in a file, in a file uh, without changing the size of the file, without allocating or deallocating blocks and stuff like that, then um, you don't need to hold a file system lock if you're just writing into one inode. Anyways, um, so the memory memory management and the uh, file system locking, I guess those are for me the, the big pain points. Um, and Outside of that, it's just like a whole lot of little ergonomic things, but that's that's definitely not an excuse because um, if I force myself to engage with the ergonomics of the system or, or you know absence of ergonomics in some cases, then those things are just going to get fixed. So that's good. That would be a good thing about switching. Um, and. Um, then, of course, there are some things that are a bit annoying about going into Serenity. One thing is that there is no uh, multiprocessing at the moment, so uh, you only get one process per at the time, which means that compilation is significantly slower than on the outside, where I can use all of my CPU cores, but that's okay. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind being in that space, because again, that would be this thing that, that just forces me to engage with the um, with the issue of multiprocessing. Um, but if I want to put a number on it, I th I think I could probably could probably get the system into a good enough shape in a week if I did nothing else. Um, with my free time than focus on this. But the thing with, with Serenity and, and every, everything around the development of Serenity is that I always just let um, excitement and curiosity and enthusiasm guide the way rather than trying to pick like the logically appropriate thing to do. Um, because I can, I can figure out which parts are necessary in order to make progress on this particular goal, but that doesn't mean that I feel um, super excited about working on these things right now. Um, but who knows, maybe I will after I record and upload this video talking about it, because um, everything I say in, in, in commute talk has, has a way of um, changing the course of, of things anyway. Because um, it's weird, but ever since I've been doing these talks, I feel like I feel like I'm making a lot more mental progress on things. I guess just because I have a chance to to talk through stuff and um, and I get a lot of interesting uh, feedback. From from um, from the viewers, from the lovely viewers who who comment and and um, and get in touch about things and ideas, and um, it's been really great. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I will. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's always good to underpromise and overdeliver, right? And sometimes you can underpromise and then not deliver. <laughs> That's okay too. Uh, anyway, 
What is there to say about this? Sometimes I guess I can feel a little bit lazy um, that I'm comfortable with my virtual setup and I'm just, uh, you know, I keep pushing forward in a very comfortable virtualization environment where, um, you know, a lot of systems of the past um, during development would surely have, have moved into uh, the target system at this point, um, but I just keep going this way and I don't know, maybe it's a habit thing, maybe I'm just comfortable. <laughs> um, but I certainly enjoy the uh, rapid progress that I'm still able to make. Um, but I don't think that would change necessarily. And then of course, the um, of course uh, I'll have to work a, a lot more on Hack Studio and the text editing component and stuff. And um, probably have to look at actually spending some time on C++ integration because I'm very, very happy using QCreator for uh, C++ Grok powers, like, uh, you know, jump to definition, find all uses, things like that. Um, it's something that will at least initially be quite jarring to be without. I know that when I bring up Vim or something to, to write some code, then it tends to frustrate me because it's not nearly as pleasant as QCreator. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's all, it's all just work waiting to be done. And most of it is really fun, so that's cool. Um, of course, <clears throat> these are just my personal uh, things that I would like to, to see. Um, to see in the system to make it <clears throat> more palatable, excuse me, to make it more palatable for daily use. At least that's a de development <clears throat> thing. Maybe I should, <clears throat> ah, Jesus, excuse me. Uh, maybe I should set up some kind of a target for this, for myself, that the target should be like, make uh, one video where I use nothing but Serenity OS, like produce the whole video inside Serenity OS. I mean, not produce the video, not like edit the video, but but record the whole thing uh, from start to finish. Uh, and um, I think that would be a very interesting goal. Um, yeah, let's let's see if we can we can do that sometime soon. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm <clears throat> just uh, not sure where to go with this, so uh, I think this will be the end of the commute talk, <laughs> but thanks for asking the question, Sebastian, question Sebastian, and um, I hope you all have a really good day, and if you don't, then I hope you still come out the other end having learned something. And I will see you next time. Bye.